everyone and welcome to this week's edition of Class Act with Ilse Klink, where I help you take the hustle out of getting started as an actor. This week we're going to be chatting about auditions and self-tapes, the very important auditions and self-tapes. Now just the mention of auditions just gives some people butterflies in the stomach, you know. It can be quite hair-raising and quite um, nerve-wracking to do an audition, but that's part of the job. So. We need to get used to it as quickly as possible, like with everything else. As usual, I have an insert at the end of my video from a young actor who tells us about the two things that they wish they had known when they started out in the industry. And this week's guest is Roberto Kyle. At the moment, you can see him on Cakenet's telenovela called Arden's Flay, for which he won a Best Actor Award um, for 2020. He was also seen in Homeland with Claire Danes, and he's also done Eye in the Sky. So he's worked with Helen Mirren as well. It's quite impressive. <laughs> he's living my dream. <laughs> so he's going to be chatting to you a little bit about what he wished he had known when he'd started out in the industry. On to auditions. One of the most hair raising things you could possibly do is walk into a live audition as the character. Now I said that in my previous videos as well, please never do that. Never walk into an audition as the character because um, the casting director as well as the director, if he's there, would like to get a sense of who you are. They want to know who it is that they're going to be working with. So don't walk in as the character because then they don't know who they're going to be working with. And generally people like to work with pleasant people. They want to get a sense of who you are. And then during the audition, normally you'll have the casting director and the director sometimes, and you'll have somebody operating the camera and the casting director will sometimes read with you, which is great because then you can get something from the people that are wanting to cast you and they'll have a good sense of what the scene is all about that you're about to audition for. Sometimes the cameraman is the reader, is the everything as well. And it feels a little bit weird to walk into the room and it feels a little bit casual, but it doesn't mean that you need to do a casual audition. The thing about auditions are that you've got to be as prepared as possible. You've got to know your words off by heart. You've got to know it backwards. And that's very important because you don't want to go in there unprepared because they can see it on camera and you get a sense of people who are not prepared. Know your words thoroughly because that's going to help you in the scene. Know exactly what the choices are that you made for your particular character and why you made those choices and make good choices. Don't always go with conventional choices. Go with something different. Bring a bit of creative flair. I'm not saying go way out of the box, but add something different. And so that the director can think of the character differently as well. And also you'll get a sense that you are creative and you can add your own flavor to a particular scene, which will be great for them to watch. I mean, if they're seeing like 15 people and you give them something slightly different, you become memorable, which is really great. I'm not saying go way out of bounds and do some crazy audition. That's not what I'm saying. Just... Do a good audition, but make really great choices for the character that you're about to play. Then, um, the, at the end of your audition, you have to let the audition go. Leave it in the room. Once an audition is done, don't think about it. Don't mope about it. Don't weep about it. What's done is done. And when you're doing the audition initially, think about it as if you've already got the part. And you are doing the scene as if you're already shooting the movie and this was that real moment in the movie where you're standing in front of the camera and you're delivering your best work. You can only and always do your best. Nobody can ask any more of you. So once you've done your best, leave the room, say your goodbyes and let it go. Don't get depressed about it. Don't harp on it. Don't call your agent 10 times a day to find out whether you got the part. Just let it go. If they want you for a callback, that's great. That's something really, really good. In other words, they are considering you for the part, which is really, really positive. Then do the same audition you gave them before. 
And then possibly if the director wasn't there in the first round of auditions, he may be there now so that he can direct you or she can direct you. So to see whether you can take direction as an actor, which is always great to have them in the room and you know they can get a real sense of whether you can deliver in terms of if they've asked you to tweak a particular line or do something different with a character they're there in the room they can see your process they can see you and they can get a sense of ah this is a great actor he is somebody i can direct as well on to self tapes which is something i mean i watched a video the other day where there was this casting director talking about the self-tapes that she's seen in her lifetime and she says the things that she has seen she can make a whole movie about. So the first thing not to do is to stand in front of a space like this doing your self-tape because there's a whole lot of distractions. You've got to stand against a plain wall, either grey or blue, because those colours bring out a really good um, hue on your self-tape. Then you get the ring light, which is super, super expensive. I mean, I often go out and go, mm, I need a ring light, but it's really expensive. You get those little ring lights for 400 Rand. They start from about 400 Rand and they go up to 1,500 Rand. What I like to do is to shoot with good daylight. If your agent sends you for an audition late in the day, and you have to have it done by nine o'clock the next morning and you don't have time to do it early in the morning and you want to do it in the evening, you're going to need some proper lighting. So then a ring light would apply. You know, so learn your words thoroughly, even if it is given to you later, really, really dig into the analysis of the text so that you are on top of what it is that you mean to be delivering. And the nice thing about self-tapes is if you get it wrong the first time, you can do it you can do it a hundred times until you feel it is absolutely the way you want it, which is really great. So it gives you an opportunity to play around a little bit, which is different from doing a live audition where you get to do it maybe once or twice. If you're doing an audition with your phone, use it landscape, okay? This way, not this way, this way because apparently um you it's difficult for them to i don't know i don't even know what the term is but it just comes out all squashed you know it makes the screen smaller and the thing is you'll find that maybe a director is very busy maybe they're shooting the show already and they need to cast you and you've got a small role he's going to look at you on his phone they're going to look at you on their phones. They're not necessarily going to be sitting in front of a computer where it's all widescreen. When you're shooting your self-tape, the framing for your self-tape should be from just above your navel up and not too much headroom. I mean, here in my thing, in my um, video, you can see there's quite a lot of headroom. So you don't want to give them too much headroom. The clothing you should be wearing should be one solid color. You shouldn't have stripes like I have on today. You shouldn't have dots. You shouldn't have paisley. Patterned clothing is the worst idea for television. If you've ever done a television interview, they always tell you no stripes and dots, polka dots and no patterns, please, because it strobes and it becomes distracting for people watching your audition. Whatever you're doing, please don't shoot in your kitchen, in front of your fireplace like I'm doing now, in front of your beautiful pictures because it's all distraction. They just want you against a plain wall or a plain sheet if you have a sheet. They want you against that. They just want to see what you are doing. They want to watch you acting. That's all. They don't want to see how nice your paintings are at your house. And when you're using a sheet, please iron the sheet. That's a distraction if your sheet is all opgefrommel. <laughs> If it's all messed up, you know, iron the sheet. It's going to be distracting if you're doing an audition and they can see a line on the side here or a dirty spot or whatever it is. A clean iron sheet would do perfectly for your self-tape. You might have to ask somebody to read for you. Your mother, your sister, your 10-year-old son. We don't want them to do an interpretive reading. If you have friends that are actors, that's great. They can give you something to work with. But mostly, 
you're not going to get that. Don't have them too close to the microphone of your phone or your camera because then you just get this booming sound from them. So ask them to speak a little bit softer or stand slightly away from the camera but not totally out of the eye line of your camera or your phone so that you're playing over here. You know, if they're standing there, that's the performance that you're going to get. Your performance can be here just slightly to the right or to the left of camera, not too far out. One of the other things you should do is to slate your audition. So my name is Ilsa Klink. I'm with whoever um, your agent is. I'm 1.58 meters tall. Those are the three things that you need. Another idea is to record your slate separately and have a standard slate that you send in with all of your self tapes. Sometimes I find it very distracting when I have to do an ID before I do the audition. What you can do is do the ID, pause the camera, and then go into the scene. You know, ask the person that's helping you. That can work, or you can do your ID at the end of it. And that's what I have for you. I hope you found it really helpful. If you have, please like, share, and subscribe. If you have any comments or questions, please post them below and I will answer them. Let's hear what Roberta Kyle has to say about the two things he wished he had known when he started out in the industry. Hi guys, my name is Roberto Kyle and I am a professional film, television and theatre actor. And I'm also a voice artist. So I've been asked by the amazing Ilse Klink to partake in this video and to talk about two things that I wish I had known starting out in this industry. Um, so he had those. Uh, number one, I wish I had known that it was okay to stop and to start again um, without being so hard on myself whenever I felt that I had failed at something. I think young actors must prepare themselves <laughs> at the fact that they'll get more no's than yes's being in this industry and that it is perfectly okay and that it doesn't equate to them having failed, but rather that they have something to work on and something to work towards. I think that we must, from a very early stage in our careers, find ways of constructively engaging with missed opportunities. Um, I think this is something that most successful individuals understand. The importance of pausing, going back to the drawing boards and figuring out ways of enhancing their abilities and their crafts and to start again more prepared and being more ready. So that is number one. Number two, I wish there was someone to tell me that I'm as valuable as I am talented. I don't think that I've considered the value that I bring to projects as much as I should have. Um, I think there's been a dangerous precedent set in that performers, particularly young performers, are often expected to bring to the table what they have um, for exchange, in exchange for exposure. And I do believe there's a time and place for exposure and that it is important. But I do also believe that inserting a performer's worth into the conversation and into the negotiation is equally, if not more important. Because I do think that young performers of colour can't live off of exposure they can't because exposure is not going to bring you food it's not going to cover your rent it's also not going to contribute towards your black tax which is something that most performers of color is confronted by and so i think it is important to reiterate to young performers that they have a worth and that they are valuable and that they have a valuable gift that they offer to the project and offer to the world um, and so that's the second thing i wish i had known um, so yeah, those are my two things and I wish you all the best of luck and I hope I had made sense. And lastly, thank you so much Ilsa for this opportunity. Bye. Thank you so much to Roberta Kyle for your insights and your wisdom that you were willing to share with us. If you want to follow him on any of the social media pages, I always put my guests contacts on social media in the comment box below. Take care everyone. Thanks for watching.